Welcome to Drive, a movie famed for its vaporwave vibes and Ryan Gosling being a cool man of little words. Wanna guess what he does in this movie? That's right, he drives. Okay, so he's a getaway driver on his way to pick up a sleeper getaway mobile from crippled Walter White, who he also works for as a mechanic, and he does the getawaying for two criminals in a not so over the top, kind of realistic getaway, except when he floors it here because the police chopper spots him, he doesn't seem to go any faster than the cars around him. In fact, it looks like he might be going the same pace, if not slower. Whatever though. He finishes this getaway in a parking lot of a major sports event and uses the people leaving the sport event as cover to get away on his feet and I say major sports event because I forgot what sport it was. Pretty sure it was basketball or some sport involving balls. Could have been boxing though. However that too kind of involves balls if you think about it. Anyway I'm guessing it's a successful mission for him and his two clients so called clients got away the same way he did using the basketball game fans leaving as cover. He gets home we watch a sick intro Ryan doesn't speak he see woman neighbor he speak he do stunt for a movie but he no speak he drive and no speak then he see same woman at the grocery store with a broken down car he goes to help her but he still no speak and this is the number one reason why this movie is unrealistic. Toyota's don't break down. That's fake news, unwatchable. Doesn't matter, he takes the woman and her child over back to their apartment. He finally speaks, gives the kid a toothpick for 10 extra cool points, which I never got. Like, is it really worth risking hurting the inside of your mouth by bumping into a whatever thing that is at face level just to look a tiny bit more badass? As far as I'm concerned, you look like a dumbass, Ryan. Anyway, they exchange important data, like the fact that the kid's dad, her husband, is in the clink and the whereabouts of the garage Ryan works at. We see a very clear interest betwixt him and Shannon, that's her name. Oh wait, that's Heisenberg's name. Never mind. I'll figure out her name later. Then we cut to Heisenberg trying to get some money out of dirty dodgy businessman Benny to buy an old stock car so that he can race it and make a race team with Ryan as his driver because he really believes in his abilities as a driver and step three profit. So Benny's like, I want to see the kid first though. So he sees the kid drive around in a shitty stock car and he's like, deal, you can have my money. Next, we move on to Irene. Eh? That is bringing her car over to Sharon's garage who sees that Ryan likes her. So he offers up his services to drive her home since her car is fucked and their neighbors. And on the way home, he's like, you want to see something and he takes her and the kid over to the shitty creek or something I don't know what it's called but it looks like a fucking swamp that Shrek lives in which is a prime murder spot if you ask me but that raises no red flags for her because she got the hots for him over the next few days I think he keeps driving her around being her free over driver and a connection between them is formed then at the gay garage Benny talks to him saying that Shannon's a good guy but he never had the best luck he overcharged some Jews and they broke his ass and we have a lot right on you kid so you do good now all right he's like good. then later while Ubering the girl around for free she says that a lawyer called and said that the kid's dad is coming home next week from the jails and obviously Ryan's penis is now flaccid as fuck because of that news and on Mr. Moon Knight's welcome back party he sees her sulking outside her apartment because her deadbeat husband is back from the sinner cabinet fuck that's such a good name for jail actually someone make that a thing he then meets Steven himself who kind of knows about him and his girl and he's kind of trying to be a little bit threatening to Ryan and then we cut to Ryan in a diner telling this guy very aggressively to fuck off with his getaway driver offer job offer I guess he feels sort of done with that now that he's gonna be a race driver although it's only the start of his career also the guy looks kind of so fair play I guess. Anyway, on his way home he sees slow motion bad people that turned out to have beaten up Mark in front of his kid and as it turns out, even more than that, Steven owes these people who were part of a gang, a prison gang, protection money, prison protection gang money. Fuck you, you, I can't, why can't I word? He owes them prison protection money. Yes. But they keep hiking up the price and now if he doesn't rob a pawn shop for them, they're gonna go after Pinocchio and Irene. So Ryan decides to help him, but not before he gets invited to a super awkward dinner where Steven basically outs himself for being a pedophile and Pinocchio being the result of this illegal schmecks. Then Ryan steals a shtang and this bald idiot allows him to help Steven along with this dumb bitch called Bleach or something that is part of their gang I think are also hired to do this job with them, the pawn shop job, for a grand total of nothing and he's okay with that because all he wants is for them to leave the bitch and her kid alone after my guys that is paid. Capiche? Next, when the time arrives and they're robbing the pawn shop while Ryan waits for them in the stang, a suspicious Chrysler rolls up. The woman comes out with a bag of dough, gets in the car, a Mark gets out and gets shooty shooty, McBooty, itty bitty, McTitty. I don't know what I'm saying anymore. Man, why are you watching this? He he gets shot and killed, okay? And you know what? Fuck him. He walks out super slow and chill. Who the fuck walks out super slow and chill in a situation like that? Come on, man. You're supposed to sprint to the car, dumbass. Stupid. Anyway, Ryan sees this and zooms away with bleach, bitch. The sus car starts following them and chasing them and they immediately transition from a intersection shot to a shot in the middle of a mountain road. How the fuck that's possible? I don't know. But after this short chase gets ended by a fucking cone, that's right, the shit you put on your head when you're drunk. Okay, maybe it was not just a cone, it was more roadwork shit, but still, the cone did look like it made the car bounce initially and all the rest of the stuff does not look like a car chase ending worthy obstacle in my opinion, but whatever. Ryan and Bleach are now hiding out in a motel with a million units instead of 40,000 units in stolen American currency. When news of this incident hits the news, saying that the dude is dead and the owner of the pawn 
Punch-Up said that he acted alone, which is kind of more sassy vaca shit. So he asks her how the fuck that was possible when the guy saw him in there with her and he saw her leave with the fucking money. And she lies to him, so he equal rights equal fights her. And she says that she was told there was gonna be a second card to hold him up, but wasn't told anything about how much money it was and anybody getting shot. So he's like, okay, take me to the bald man. So she gets up to clean herself up in the bathroom. And at that moment, her phone rings, his spidey sense kicks in, her brain gets blasted all over the fucking walls through the window of the bathroom. He stabs the guy with the shower curtain tube, takes his shotgun and blasts the other intruder who's coming through the door to King Kong Kum and oh, ah, 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 he's moving, he's moving. I saw that motherfucker. That's like one of the only times paying attention to dead bodies if they're moving in movies actually paid off. Fuck yeah, that's a win, baby. Anyway, if shit hasn't hit the fan yet, it definitely has now. Because he goes over to Shannon to fix up his arm because he got shot in it. He tells him everything that happened there. Then he goes over to the back room of a nightclub to find Baldo. No idea how he knew he was going to be there. I must have missed something, but who cares? He beats him up and forces him to call whoever his boss is. And it turns out to be Nino, the same Jew that looks like a chat cat and broke eyes over his ass and is Benny's business partner. And he wants to give him the money. No hassle, no tricks. He just wants to get out of this. However, Nino is an asshole. And he sends a dude to kill him while he was talking to Irene, trying to tell her what was going on. And when they step in the elevator with the said guy coming to kill him, Ryan's cool guy sends his notices that he's obviously here to kill him. So he pulls Irene aside in super slow-mo and gives her a big old smoochin' while the guy who's there to kill him and if need be her and the kid does fucking nothing like a retard, which ends up biting him in the ass because right after mouse sex was over, Ryan beats the brains out of him using his foot to turn his head into mashed potatoes while Irene is just in disbelief and I'm assuming her lady boner is still in full raging mode for him because she doesn't seem to call the cops or tell anybody about this. And the movie goes on with Ryan going to Shannon like, how the fuck did they know where I live? <laughs> Turns out Heisenberg stupidly called Benny to explain how Ryan only wanted to help the woman and the kid and get out of trouble, trying to be a good friend to Ryan and help him, but that's clearly not what happened. And Ryan's obviously mad as hell, but he controls his fifis and tells Sharon to skip the bop bop out of town forever because they will come looking for him trying to kill him. Then we move on to a conversation I don't really get between the two shady business partners, but what the hell, I'm gonna give it a shot explaining it. See, a rival gang had a million buckaroonies stashed in a pawn shop to set up a rival operation on their turf. You know, find that out, I wanted to take the money and set up a dummy robbery without consulting Benny first, but you know, obviously went tits up and now they gotta tie up loose ends, kill the bald moron, Shannon and Ryan. So Benny kills the baldy and tells him to clean up his mess. And how the dick is this knife so clean? He just ripped a guy's throat open with it. Maybe he wiped it on a piece of cloth or a shirt or something. Doesn't matter. Back to Ryan who's stealing a mask from his movie set and nobody bats an eye on how bloody he is. Probably because it's a movie set and they think it's a prop. Meanwhile though, Shannon who still has not left the town because he is an infinite hamster wheel of retardation that takes so much time to set up a shit is approached and murdered by Benny who then leaves after he murders him. And Ryan shows up to the garage to find him dead and pick up the money from the GTO he's laying on. And there's a couple things wrong here. First of all, he's still going around town in parts that are not movie sets with bloody clothes not arousing any suspicion. And second of all, you left the money in the garage? Seriously, you fucking idiot? The fact that he didn't bump into Benny while he was there is such a miracle, honestly. Anyway, he goes over to Nino's Pizzeria where he's having a small party, mask on, no idea why this one square is the only one that is not opaque, but whatever. Also, how is this bitch not noticing a bald, creepy guy with a massive head peering in through the one square that is not opaque? Whatever, who cares? Movie aesthetic, right? It's all about the vibe, my guy. It's all about the vibe. The vibe's good, doesn't have to make sense, am I right? Fucking hell. So he waits for him to leave, then bumps him off the road with his indestructible car, then shoves him, crashes him off a cliff, then drowns him in the ocean. After that, he hits up Benny. Benny's like, let's meet or I kill your girl. Ryan's like, okay. Then he calls Irene mean, like, I love you and I miss you. <sighs> Then he calls Irene like, I gotta leave forever, plus you're the best thing ever. And after that, he meets Benny and Benny tells him that he can promise the girl's safety to him if he gives him the money, but he cannot promise the same for him. So he's like, okay, and takes him very gingerly over to the trunk of his car where the money is. And Benny, who has had flawless technique in murdering so far throughout the movie, absorbs all the retard rays emitted by the universe into his brain and stabs him in the gut instead of any other essential or instant death area location in Ryan's body. And Ryan, although stupid for not expecting this and letting him do this in the first place, does not do the same mistake and goes for his neck, kills him, and then he sits there in his car for at least a good 40 seconds deceased whoops nope he's alive pull the sneaky on ya then he drives off leaving benny's dead body with the money why the fuck would you that piss head take the money it's over who cares or at least take enough to cover the expenses of the stabbing wound god knows you're gonna need in america anyway bitch tries to look for him but too late sigma males on his grind said honey and we get a vaporwave synthwave outro this movie gets a vroom vroom out of a meow